In the morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, how are you today? You're listening to the St. Mark and Bemidji Sunday Edition Podcast, which is brought to you by the Automatic Friendship Register Script. Never again will you have to sweat it out, trying to remember how to spell your own name or where your house is. The Automatic Friendship Register Script fills out that pesky card for you perfectly, every time. The Automatic Friendship Register Script, recommended by dreamers and absent-minded scientists everywhere. This podcast features a replay of our Sunday sermon, or on occasion a sermon from another Wells sister church. If you enjoy what you hear today, you might also enjoy our weekday devotions, which you will automatically get if you subscribe to this podcast. Additionally, you might consider sharing it with a friend. Each and every podcast has a share link in its description, which can be found in the same podcast app you're listening to right now. I've tried to make the link to it obvious. Let me know if it isn't at john.kirk at stmarksbemidji.org. Share God's word, because God wants us all to come to be with him forever. Today's sermon comes to us from our Easter service from our home church right here in Bemidji, Minnesota. Let's listen in now. May God bless our time together in the word. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. He is risen. And that is our vindication. Who needs vindication? Isn't that kind of nice to be vindicated? Think of a small scale. Maybe you're in an argument with somebody at home or at work and then you're proven right. I know, guys, that doesn't happen for us often. Everybody likes to be vindicated. On a more serious note, there was a story in the news uh, not all that long ago about a man who had served 30 years of a life sentence for murder and new DNA evidence came out, probably with new technology, and they analyzed it and they found that this guy was not the murderer. After serving 30 years of a life sentence, his first phrase when he came out of jail and the reporter stuck the microphone in his face was I feel vindicated this morning is all about vindication being proved right so who needs it when we're talking about vindication we'll start with the obvious first of all Jesus needs to be vindicated after what had taken place on Good Friday, it certainly looked like Jesus was wrong. Throughout Mark's Gospel, he repeats his, his, uh, this phrase to his disciples three times. I'll be handed over to the chief priests and to the teachers of the law. I'll be killed in three days. Rise again. His disciples had heard him say that, but after what they saw being put on trial for blasphemy, declared guilty, worthy of death by the Jewish ruling council and by Pontius Pilate. Not only one of the most painful ways to die, but it was almost, it was, it was one of the most shameful in in terms of the form of execution reserved for the worst of criminals. And this man, here he is, standing there, having made these claims, is found guilty, got on trial, found guilty by a human court. And as Jesus hung there between those two criminals, bleeding and dying on Good Friday, he indeed looked weak and powerless, as if he was not as good as he claimed to be. Would God rescue him if he, if he could? There was the women and John who stood there at the base of that cross and they looked up at their teacher and their friend bleeding and dying and they knew just like every other person who had ever hung on a cross before as they had seen how the Romans carried it out, he would die. And, G- and then Joseph of Arimathea takes his, his, his dead body, wraps it up with his friend Nicodemus and they place it in a tomb. They roll the stone in place. Done deal. 
As the sun was setting that night, it must have been impossible for the women and for the disciples to process everything. So much had happened so quickly, and it didn't look good. And as the, or as the darkness settled over the land, the disciples went into hiding out of fear. The women were left alone with their own thoughts, consumed in the moment. Had following Jesus been worth it? Was it worth it for the last three years of our lives that we dedicated to this guy? After a lengthy jury deliberation, a defendant might say something like, those are the longest hours of my life. I'd never been under such stress. It was like time was standing still. There's no way of knowing exactly what was going on in the minds of the women and of Jesus' disciples in those hours, but it must have been a mix of sadness, bitterness, confusion, fear, and doubt. And maybe you can relate. Somebody that you love deeply has died. The funeral's over. Your family and friends are back on their way over to your house. And it's too quiet. A little too quiet. Alone. And our thoughts go to places like, I feel so lost and confused, I don't understand. It's in those moments when it can be hard to practice what we preach and it feels like the jury is out. Where is this victory over death? It's not just the death of a loved one that can leave us feeling this way. Our thoughts of our own death are always kind of lurking there in the background, whether we're conscious of it or not. There's this sense that time is running out, that our bodies are failing, that our minds are fading. And even for the young, there's a deep anxiety about making the right choices and putting the, the best foot forward, having the best friends. Who, where should I go to college? Where should I go to school? What job should I have? Who should I love? Millions of possibilities. And against the backdrop of this very brief life, our sinful choices often appear like enlarged shadows. Every mistake gets magnified in our minds. And when we do make mistakes, when we do fall into sin, and we cer certainly do, those too can become enlarged and loom like big black shadows on the canvas of our life. And we ponder how we have let our Savior down and failed to live as He would have us live. Jesus wasn't guilty. But we so often are. We might not know exactly what the disciples and those women were thinking on that Easter morning, but Mark tells us what they were doing. At the break of dawn, they went to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body. This one final act of love for their friend and for their teacher. They were pretty sure that it was all over. But they look up and they look in the distance and they see that the stone has been moved. That immediately raises some questions. And as they enter, they see somebody sitting there in a white robe on the on the stone slab that Jesus had been laid on. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? What does this mean? Even though Jesus had predicted his death and his resurrection on several occasions, it seems that it was still too much to process. If the women had expected Jesus to alive, to be alive, they wouldn't have gone there to anoint his body for burial, to do a little bit better job than Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus did. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb, but later it would sink in. Later that day, Jesus would appear to them, to Peter, and to the disciples, on the road to Emmaus, to the eleven behind locked doors, later to 500 people at one time. 
The early reports and the eyewitness accounts corroborate the story again and again and again and again. What Jesus said was true. He was handed over. He did suffer and die. But He has risen again. The good news is true. The headline was victory, vindication. Paul spells it out in 1 Corinthians 15 if, that if Jesus had not been risen, we would have no reason to believe that He was anything more than a fraud or a criminal. We would have no reason to think on his words of forgive, uh, to think that his words of forgiveness or eternal life carry any weight. Why would they? If such a man was killed and stayed dead, and surely we w couldn't or shouldn't expect any fate other than that of death. Paul says, "If for only this life we have hope in Christ, we of all people are most to be pitied." But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. Today, Easter Day, is all about vindication. Jesus didn't come down from the cross to prove that He was the Son of God. He couldn't because He loved us too much as we talked about on Friday. He wouldn't because His work was not complete. Jesus didn't come down from the cross to prove that He was the Son of God. No, He did something even better. He rose from the dead. Jesus was proved right. He is the God-man. He is the Messiah that He claimed to be. Easter is vindication. Did Jesus look guilty on the cross? It wasn't, the, it wasn't just the charge that was nailed up above His head. The criminals on either side and the taunts of the crowd gave the impression that He indeed was guilty. It was also His own cry from the depths of His agony. My God, my God, why have You forsaken Me? Jesus did bear guilt on the cross. Not His own, but ours. The Lord laid on Him the iniquity of us all. Or as Paul says else in 2 Corinthians, God made Him who had no sin to be sin for us. Every sin was punished once and for all in Christ. And by raising Christ from the dead, if Jesus had not been raised, Paul is right. We are to be pitied above all people. But the Father put the exclamation point on the ministry of Jesus. Put the exclamation point on His Son. By these words from the cross, it is finished. It was indeed finished. Vindication. These sins are paid for. Yours and mine. There's a hint of that forgiveness that's spoken in the angel's message. She said, the, 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 the angel there tells the women, go and tell who specifically? Peter. Go tell Peter. In our ladies' Bible class on Wednesday mornings, uh, we've been studying Mark's Gospel, and I, I gave this little caveat at the beginning. I said, pay attention in Mark's Gospel, because Mark's Gospel is oftentimes written from Peter's perspective. It was St. Mark who went and got most of his information from Peter. So he puts the emphasis here. The Holy Spirit has the, the, this recorded here for us. Go hit, tell His disciples and Peter. Why Peter? Why specifically Peter? Well, what was the last thing that Peter had done to Jesus? When was the last time that Peter, the last burning moment in Peter's mind of seeing Jesus? Maybe he was there at a distance looking at the cross. But in terms of Scripture, when's the last time we see Peter looking at Jesus? And it's that shot, that eye shot, across the courtyard as Jesus is being drugged from, from uh, uh, in front of the, the Sanhedrin, put on trial, and Peter has just said, I don't even know him. I don't know the man. Calls down curses on himself. I don't know the man. I swear to you. 
and the rooster crows. And Peter goes outside and he weeps bitterly. Go tell Peter he's risen. Go proclaim that forgiveness to him. Later on, after his resurrection, Jesus would personally reinstate Peter. You denied me, but I will never forsake you, Peter. And that means that Jesus not just forgives, not only forgives Peter or forgives the, the other 11 for, for abandoning him, that means that Jesus loves and forgives you and I too. Even for the times that we have doubted. For the sinful choices that we have made under pressure. In fear or in despair. We have worried and doubted and done all kinds of things, but Jesus says He will never leave you, never will He forsake you. Easter is vindication. Also for those who, not just for Jesus, but all of us who have put our hope in Him. You know, like in the Old Testament, Noah builds the ark and everybody scoffs at him. Everybody laughs at him. Well, he was vindicated, wasn't he? Job makes this claim in chapter 19. I know that my Redeemer lives. Who was around him then? His friends? His wife? Anybody else that happened to listen? What do you mean your Redeemer lives, Job? What are you talking about? You're a mess. Job was vindicated when he said, I know my Redeemer lives, and that in the end He will stand on the earth, yet in my flesh I will see God. These words in Mark's Gospel, this Easter account of Jesus' resurrection is proof that Job was right. It's proof for us too that if Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, then we have a hope beyond this life. There is something more for us than just what is in front of our eyes. Paul calls Jesus the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. His first fruits are merely a symbol, a a promise of the whole harvest to come and in the way that it will come. So Jesus' resurrection is the promise of the resurrection of all people. As the one goes, so goes the whole batch. Christ the firstfruits. Then, when He comes, those who belong to Him. And that day will be our ultimate vindication. Even now, Easter is vindication for us as we live as people who are often judged by the world. There's been a lot of talk about the decline of the Christian church in the United States. There's been a lot of mention about fewer people in this country following Jesus. Church attendance is down. Citizens overall are becoming more and more and more secular, clinging to the religion of politics because it offers something. It offers something in the here and the now. The Christian might, the same Christian might turn around and look and say the church is dying. How is that possible? Brothers and sisters in Christ, it's not. The devil doesn't win. The church that is the embodiment of the risen Christ cannot die. The Christian church, individual congregations may close. Sadly, some Christians may fall away from the faith. But as long as Jesus lives, which is forever, His church lives too. We here today are proven right. We are vindicated. For us, this is the feast of victory for our God. Not just this day. Not just this, but this whole post-resurrection era. We may be afflicted by temptation. We may be troubled and harassed in a hostile world that wants to put God's Word on trial, put God's people on trial. But just as all appeared lost on Good Friday. Was it? Absolutely not. Carrying that cross out to Golgotha was Jesus' victory march. And so when things look lost and abandoned and we are tempted to, we are tempted to 
a doubt and to fear and to flee. Remember, Jesus' victory march didn't look like a victory march, but it indeed was. When our lives take a turn inward, this isn't it. This is your victory march. Along the way, our lives are, are, we have the knowledge that our lives are imbued with eternal significance. We don't just love people for the here and now. We don't just store up things for the here and now. No, we have something more. We know that we can testify to the truth. And indeed, it is truth. We may be on a simple, humble, almost imperceptible victory march, but we sing this song of victory with the saints of God and the angels in heaven that this is true. Because Christ has been raised, we are vindicated. Sin is forgiven. Death is defeated. Jesus is Lord. Christ and His people have been put on trial. But Easter, this day, the tomb broken, brings us this glorious verdict. Vindicated. He is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. I sincerely pray that today's meditation on God's Word has enriched you. Didn't get enough of God's Word? Are you missing out on that in-person fellowship? We hold divine services right here in Bemidji, Minnesota at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday school and adult Bible study is also offered between our Sunday services at 9.15 a.m. We also live stream our Sunday divine service at 8 a.m. You can ensure that you are notified when a stream is live or a new podcast is available by subscribing to our YouTube channel. It's easy to find by typing in St. Mark Bemidji in the search bar and clicking on the subscribe button. Want to listen to meditations the way I do every day? Subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app. Go to podcastindex.org and search for St. Mark Bemidji to find us. This is our fifth year producing this podcast, and there is a large archive of devotional material online available if you want to learn more about God and His Word. Visit www.stmarksbemidji.org or look at the show notes in this podcast for a link to this and many other meditations on God. If you have any questions or you would like more information about our church and its ministry, please visit our website, which is once again www.stmarksbemidji.org. May God bless the rest of your day.